Hi, I am Mrs. Hannah Angelin. In this video, we are going to discuss about the analysis of statically indeterminate beams by consistent deformation method. In my previous lectures, I have discussed about deflection calculation of statically determinate beams and rigid plane frames and determinate plane presses by unit load method and Castigliano's theorem method. If you have missed watching those, I will give the link in the description box. Kindly watch it. Now let us go into the video. These are the basic relations you should know for solving statically indeterminate beams by consistent deformation method. A cantilever beam with a load at the free end, the slope and deflection expressions are shown here. If there is a moment at the free end, Corresponding expressions are shown. If it carries UDL, next a simply supported beam with a central point load, the values of slope and deflection under the load is shown here. Again, a simply supported beam with UDL that is shown here. So, whichever is relevant for our problem, we are going to consider from this set. Take the values of deflection and slope for solving by consistent deformation method. In consistent deformation method, degree of static indeterminacy is dealt. For a roller end, the number of unknowns at the support, that is the unknown forces at the support is 1, that is in the vertical direction. At the hinge end, there are two unknowns, one in the horizontal, one in the vertical direction. So the number of unknown forces at the hinge support is 2. For a fixed support, there are three unknowns, horizontal, vertical and the angular direction. Number of unknown forces in a fixed support is 3. With the knowledge of this, we shall see how consistent deformation method is used for analyzing statically indeterminate beams. Let us see the analysis procedure of consistent deformation method for indeterminate beams. In this method, Redundant forces are identified by removing restraint in the direction of the forces. The released structure is obtained. In this released structure, displacements are obtained in the direction of redundant forces. Then, the displacement due to each redundant forces are obtained and the condition of displacement compatibility are imposed to get additional equations. Solving these equations, we get the values of redundant forces. Let us see few worked out examples. This is a propped cantilever beam carrying uniformly distributed load of intensity W per unit length. We are asked to determine the reaction components that is RA, RB and MA. Since there is no horizontal loading, HA is 0. Now the solution First step, calculation of degree of static indeterminacy. Degree of static indeterminacy is determined as capital R minus small r. Small r are the available static equilibrium equations. We have learned about this in our first few lectures. Capital R is the number of unknowns at the support. Here you have a fixed support. Here a roller n. So three reactions. One reaction here, totally four. Small r, available equilibrium equations are three. So, degree of static indeterminacy is one. So, there is a redundant force in excess that makes the structure indeterminate. We can tell redundant as the excess force available in the structure. Let us choose Rb as a redundant force. If the redundant force is removed, the beam is a determinate one. By removing the redundant force, we can find the deflection at point B. Let us take the deflection is delta 1. When redundant force B alone is acting, it will push the beam in the upward direction. Let us take the deflection as delta 2. For consistency of deflection at B, delta 1 should be equal to delta 2. For a cantilever beam with UDL throughout, the deflection at the free end we get from the basic expressions. Delta is given as W L power 4 by 8 EI. 
acting in the downward direction. For a cantilever beam, if there is a concentrated load at the free end, the value of deflection is load into L cubed by 3 EI. Here the load is RB. So we have RB L cubed by 3 EI. This acts in the downward direction. This acts in the upward direction. For consistency condition, we can write the equation delta 1 downward equal to delta 2 upward. If I write equation like this, I can equate both the expressions to find the value of Rb. By equation of statics, that is sigma v equal to 0, I write Ra as total load minus Rb. I get the value of Ra. With the help of Rb and the total load, I can write equation to get the value of Ma. So the reaction components Ma is determined, Ra is determined and Rb is determined. So these are the unknowns at the support for this cantilever beam which is propped at B. Let us work out another problem. This is a propped cantilever beam carrying two point loads mentioned in the diagram. We are asked to determine the reaction components in the beam. The reaction components are the support moment at A, the vertical reaction at A and vertical reaction at B. Let us name it as M, A, R, A and R, B. First step is calculation of degree of static indeterminacy. Here this end is fixed. This is roller. Totally we have three reactions here and one reaction here as the unknown. Capital R minus small r gives the degree of static indeterminacy. Since small r are the available static equilibrium equations, we have capital R as 4, small r as 3. So degree of static indeterminacy is 1. Let us choose Rb as the redundant force. Each load is taken separately for our analysis. First, let us take 60 kN load. Deflection below the 60 kN load is taken as delta 1. Next, 40 kN load. Deflection below 40 kN is taken as delta 2. This is a determinant beam. Rb is removed. Redundant force is removed. For this determinant beam carrying loads, conjugate beam method is applied and moment by EI diagram is drawn for each beam. So loading is at D. Moment at A is 60 into distance 120 divided by corresponding EI. So free end is converted into fixed end and fixed end is converted to free end. It's a conjugate beam. Delta 1, delta 2 are the deflections caused when Rb is removed or when the structure is made determinate. Let delta 3 be the deflection caused in the upward direction due to Rb alone. Here it doesn't have any given loading. I can directly write the value of delta 3 from the basic expressions that delta 3 is W L cube by 3 EI. It is a cantilever beam with a point load. L is from A up till B. So Rb is the load. L is the distance from the fixed end up to the point where there is a point load. W L cube by 3 EI. So this delta 3 is caused only due to Rb. But for the given beam, Rb doesn't exist separately. It exists along with 60 kN and 40 kN. So if this Rb is removed, these deflections are caused. So I can write a consistency equation for the deflection at B and equate it to 0. Or I can write the downward deflection is equal to the upward deflection. Delta 3 from the basic expression, we can write WL cubed by 3EI. So let us see how delta 1 and delta 2 are determined. So delta 1, the deflection in the beam is the bending moment in the conjugate beam. Or here delta 2, the deflection in the beam is the bending moment in the conjugate beam. So here we need to find delta 1 and delta 2, that is the bending moment in corresponding conjugate beams. How to find the bending moment? Area of the M by EI diagram into the centroidal distance from the point under consideration. So let us check here. So let me take the first 
diagram half into base into height is the area of this portion we are considering the redundant at b the distance of the centroid of this triangle up till b has to be determined so this length is 3 meter given in the problem plus 2 third of the base of the triangle or 2 by 3 of 2 that is the distance of the centroid from b that is written here area of the triangle into the centroidal distance from b of the first diagram for the second diagram to determine delta 2 so from b till the end a whatever is the area of this m by ei diagram or the bending moment diagram in the conjugate beam into the centroidal distance of this trapezium portion so dividing the trapezium portion into a rectangle and a triangular portion centroidal distance of this triangle from b and the area of this rectangle and the centroidal distance of this rectangle from b has to be determined and summed up to get what is the bending moment to get the deflection at point c we have done that here for the rectangle area into centroidal distance for the triangle below area into centroidal distance so this is delta 1 this is delta 2 obtained from triangle and rectangle in the conjugate beam so delta 1 plus delta 2 is equal to delta 3 that is the deflection caused due to rb while equating from consistency equation we get the value of rb ra is equal to total vertical load minus rb and finally determining ma taking moment of all loads and reactions about a we get the value of ma ma ra and rb are the reaction components with the help of these values we can draw bmd and sfd one method of analysis this is one method of determining the reaction components so we used conjugate beam method here Next is a continuous beam having props at B and C carrying loads. We are asked to find the reaction components. Here the reaction components are RA, RB and RC and MA. HA is 0 because no horizontal loading. First step calculation of static indeterminacy. Here there are three reactions. Here one reaction here one reaction totally five reactions and available static equilibrium equations are three so r minus r is two so there are two redundant forces or forces in excess that are to be determined more than the available equilibrium equations let us choose rb and rc as those two redundant forces now the given beam is drawn here if support reaction at b and c are remote it becomes a determinant beam that is drawn here. So if support reaction is removed at B and C has vertical displacement. So let us consider at joint B let us name it as delta 1B. At joint C let us name it as delta 1C. This is the deflection drawn due to the given loads. Next this is a deflection diagram drawn only when RB is acting on the beam. Let us consider the vertical upward displacement at B is delta 2B and the vertical displacement at C due to RB is delta 2C. Same way if only RC is acting on the beam, RC force is acting on the beam that is a redundant force, the deflection at B joint let us consider delta 3B and deflection at C is delta 3C. By consistency of deflection at B we can write the downward displacement is equal to the upward displacements. So I can write delta 1B acting downward direction is equal to delta 2B plus delta 3B. Same way for consistency of deflection at C, I can write delta 1C acting in the downward direction equal to the summation of delta 2C and delta 3C. That is what is shown here. Delta 1B is equal to delta 2b plus delta 3b and delta 1c is given as a summation of delta 2c and delta 3c 
So few of these values can be directly obtained from basic expression. The rest we need to determine. So here we are going to use unit load method for calculation of redundance. So we have considered a cantilever beam when RB alone was acting. So the deflection at the point where load exists, it is nothing but like a cantilever beam with the loading at the free end. We know it is W L cubed by 3 EI. L is the distance from A up till the force here. Next, to find delta 3C again, it is like a cantilever beam carrying a point load at the free end. So to determine delta 3C, we have basic relation W L cubed by 3 EI. W is RC. L is the distance from the fixed end up to the reaction. So L is 7 meters L cubed by 3 EI. The rest of these values we need to determine. What is delta 2C, delta 3B we need to determine. Now check this. We are going to determine what is the value of delta 2C. Here there is no loading. We don't have any basic relations. But we are going to interpret. See how we are going to do. So delta 2C can be got from a small relation with the known value of delta 2B. So delta 2B is the displacement cost above RB. We had the basic relation WL cubed by 3 EI. So here it goes up. The beam is pushed up. We need to find what is the vertical displacement above the point of B. So from the baseline till this point we know it is delta 2B. And above that we need to calculate what is the vertical distance from the small triangle. We know this is theta, angle of deviation. If this is theta, that is the slope, the opposite side can be denoted by theta times the base length. 4 times theta gives us the vertical distance. Theta being very small, that is the slope. So we know the summation of these two will be the vertical displacement at C due to RB. So here delta 2B plus the top 4 theta that is nothing but from the small triangle base length is 4 and theta is given here. So the vertical distance is base length into the slope theta gives us 4 theta. So delta 2C equal to delta 2B plus 4 theta. We have the relations for delta 2B we have determined already like a cantilever beam carrying a concentrated load WL cubed by 3 EI plus 4 times theta. Theta is nothing but the slope of a cantilever beam. Slope of a cantilever beam is given as W L squared by 2 EI. These are the relations which I mentioned in the first few minutes of this video. So finally I get a relation of delta 2C in terms of RB. So there was a loading at RB and we determined what is the displacement at this point C. We have seen Maxwell's reciprocal theorem already in our previous videos. Maxwell reciprocal theorem states that the deflection at one point due to a unit load at the other point is equal to the deflection at the other point due to the unit load at this first point. Or I can write it as delta ij equal to delta ji. So to write this statement, we should take the load as unity. So let us take Rb as unity in equation 1. So what we have written, there is a load here. We have determined what is the deflection. Our next step is to find what is the deflection at B when there is a load at C. That is delta 3B has to be determined. To determine 3B, if I am going to take Rb as unity, then I will get an expression at C such that if Rb is unity, I can find what is the displacement. I can interpret by Maxwell's reciprocal theorem, if Rc is unity, what can be the displacement. That is what is shown here, deflection at B due to unit load at C. So this can be determined from the previous step which have determined that is deflection at C due to unit load at B. That is in the previous case. Deflection at C due to unit load at B. So if I am going to put RB as unity, I will get the deflection at C. The same value by Maxwell's reciprocal theorem, I can interpret to take the value for delta 3B. 
So delta 3B is 27 by EI. This is for unit load. If I need for RC value, for RC, what is the displacement? If I need to determine, I can just multiply this value of unit load with RC to get the total displacement due to RC. So we have used Maxwell's reciprocal theorem to determine delta 3B from delta 2C. We have determined all the values of delta 2B, 3B, delta 2C and 3C. Now we need to find what is delta 1B and delta 1C. Those two are the downward displacement or in other words what is delta VB vertical displacement at B and delta VC what is the vertical displacement at C. So downward displacement in this determinant beam with the given loading can be determined by unit load method. Then after finding the downward displacements, these downward displacements at B and C can be separately equated with the upward displacements caused due to the redundant forces RB and RC. This is a cantilever beam with the given loads. Our aim is to find the vertical deflection that is the downward deflection at B and C by unit load method. Here we need to write capital M expression small mb expression to determine the vertical deflection at b, mc expression to write the vertical deflection at c. To write expressions of small m, we need to give a unit load only in the vertical direction at the corresponding points. To determine deflection at b, unit load is given at b. To determine deflection at c, unit load is given at c. Sections are taken uniformly in all the three beams. Origins are taken from a common point for each segment. Moment expressions are written for the given loading, for the unit load at B, for the unit load at C. That is shown in the tabulation. We have discussed this in our previous videos, how to fill in the tabulation. So the segments are shown, origin taken is shown, the limits are the length of each segment, capital M expression gives the moment expression for the given loading, MB moment expression due to the unit load at B alone, MC moment expression due to the unit load at C alone. The vertical downward deflection at B and C denoted as delta 1B and delta 1C respectively can be determined from these relations. So for each segment corresponding M and MB expressions are substituted between their corresponding limits. We get the answer for delta 1B. Same way for delta 1C. By consistency of deflection at B and C, we can write these two expressions. So downward deflection at B is equal to the upward deflections at B. Downward deflection at C for the given loading is equal to the upward deflection due to the redundant forces. Equations are written, solved simultaneously and the reaction components are obtained. RB, RC, we can determine with these two equations. RA can be determined with the help of this equilibrium equation. Finally, MA can be determined with the help of this equilibrium equation. With the help of these values, we can drop BMD and SFD. These are the reaction components. We shall see another problem. A continuous beam supported on hinge and rollers. We are asked to determine the reactions at ABC, that is, the vertical reaction at A, B and C. So here first step is calculation of static indeterminacy. Static indeterminacy is the difference between the unknown forces in the given problem and the available static equilibrium equations. Here we have two reactions. Here we have one reaction. Here we have one reaction. So totally there are four unknowns in the given beam. So capital R is 4. Small r is 3 because we have 3 available static equilibrium equations. Sigma m equal to 0, sigma v equal to 0 and sigma h equal to 0. The degree of static indeterminacy for this given continuous beam is 1. Let us identify rb as the redundant force that is the excess force. Now removing this rb I have a determinate beam simply supported beam with the given loading. If rb is removed the loading causes a downward deflection at B. Let us name it as delta 1. Next, without the given loading, 
only with the redundant force rb it pushes the beam up let us consider delta 2 is the deflection at b due to rp alone from the consistency condition we know downward deflection is equal to the upward deflection i have delta 1 equal to delta 2 it is like a simply supported beam with an eccentric loading we have the basic expression we can substitute the values of a and b and l to get the deflection at b a is 4 meter b is 6 meter so let us determine what is delta 1 with this equation let us determine delta 2 equate both to find the reactions rb then rc and ra here unit load method is adopted to determine delta vb or delta 1 that is the downward deflection capital m expressions are written for moment taken about each section in the given beam with the given loading alone small m v expressions are written for the same sections with the unit load at b alone because we are going to determine the vertical deflection at b that is the downward deflection to write moment expressions we need to know what are the reactions r a r c in the given loading same way what are the reactions at a and c due to the unit load that is made a note here so with these values the tabulation is filled in portions selected are shown variation of ei is mentioned origin is shown here limits are the length of each segment m denotes bending moment expression about the sections considered in each segment mv moment expression about the same sections due to the unit load finally delta 1 that is a vertical deflection can be determined with this relation and I am going to equate this with the upward deflection due to Rb. From the consistency condition, delta 1 is equal to delta 2. That is the downward deflection at B is equal to the upward deflection at B. This is caused due to the given loading alone in the determinate beam. This is caused due to the redundant force Rb in the simply supported beam. So values are obtained from the basic relations. We have the formula W A squared B squared by 3 E I L. The values are substituted. Finally, I will get the value of R B. Making use of this static equilibrium equation, sigma A M A equal to 0, taking moments of all the loads and the reactions about A is 0. R C is determined. Making use of this static equilibrium equation, sigma V equal to 0, I can find R A. That is, Ra plus Rb plus Rc is equal to the total vertical load on the beam. So I can find the value of Ra. Till now we were discussing about the determination of reaction components that is the unknown forces at the support in indeterminate beams. Till now we learnt about the analysis of statically indeterminate beams by consistent deformation method. By selecting the redundant force releasing the force and making the structure determinate and then proceeding we get the values of the reaction components. So analysis by consistent deformation method can be done with the help of conjugate B method or with the help of unit load method. Thank you.